One thing that I, observation I've made, I'm asked all the time, what are the most common issues that people come to Wellness Forum Health, my company, uh, to talk about? And it's shifted a little bit because 24 years ago, we were talking mostly about diabetes, cancer, heart disease, which are still huge issues for people. Um, but it's shifted a little bit. And recently, I would say in the last 10 years, I've seen increasing, increasing, increasing numbers of people who are coming in to talk about psych drugs, or they're coming in to talk about health issues and they happen to take psychiatric drugs. And of course, I'm always about not telling you what to do, but saying I have a lot of resources. We have 3,500 hours of programming and 2,500 articles, referenced articles on these issues. So I'm here to put information in front of you so that you can make better decisions in the future. So I notice you're taking Zoloft, Wellbutrin, Paxil, there are any number of these drugs that people are on, Risperdal. And, um, and I have a lot of information from Peter Brigg and Peter Gertrude. We use both of their, uh, Dr. Gertrude's books and several of Dr. Bregan's books um, to show people this issue that there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance in the brain. There's not a single study that has ever shown that. And then one of the reasons is that how you would identify such an imbalance is you have to grind up the brain and assay the material. And we don't recommend that as a testing mechanism, as you might imagine. So, so anyway, this was completely fabricated. It was the drug companies and the psychiatric association looking for ways to legitimize psychiatry because um, psychiatrists wanted to uh, be in control of the mental health business. So if you're a medical doctor and you can prescribe drugs and the only treatment, recognized treatment for quote unquote, I don't even like to call it mental illness. I don't think there's any such thing as mental illness myself. Um, I think if you're unusual enough, you can be accused of being <laughs> mentally ill. There are probably people that say that about me, right? So I don't believe in mental illness. Let's call it psychological issues, right? So if you're the only person, the only group of people who can prescribe or help uh, people with psychological issues, again, it's that control issue that I've talked about before. But there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance in the brain. And when I started looking into this, that's what led me to contact Peter Bragg and to speak at one of our conferences. I was astounded at what I found. There is no such thing as a chemical imbalance in the brain. And furthermore, if you look into the clinical trials for these drugs, all kinds of misbehavior. But the biggest problem is that the clinical trials are very short. And in many instances, the, the um, endpoints were changed. What you would see, and when these documents finally became public, is that somebody, to, the, the group takes a drug, for example, and at four weeks, they're better than placebo. At eight weeks, the placebo group's starting to catch up. By 12 weeks, it's looking a little shifting the other direction, not so good for the drug group, placebo group getting better. And by 16 weeks, the placebo group's in really great shape. Well, the drug companies would cut it off at eight weeks, which they shouldn't be able to do, and then make the case that because the placebo group was not quite doing as well as the drug group, that this is an argument that it's safe to take these drugs for 25 years. And not only that, the drugs really don't work so well. So a lot of people we see are not just taking a drug, they're taking several. And one of the things that I've observed about this that's very disturbing to me, because we focus on the food a lot, helping people get better with better nutrition. Because again, if you're gonna put a ton of something through your body this year, the, the quality of that makes a difference. So we're focusing on nutrition. And I've watched people, and it goes to Dr. Bragan's point about um, people not really realizing how impaired they are. We start talking about making a grocery list, they can't do it. We start talking about planning a shopping trip, a meal plan for the week. They can't do it. Do you realize what a level of impairment this is? That you can't look at a cookbook and pick out three things you want to eat this week and make a grocery list and go buy this stuff? This is incredible. While they're insisting that they're so much better off because they're taking the drug. And I routinely see this. But so much better. I'll tell you what, since I started taking Wellbutrin, I'm, you know, I can't believe how much better I feel. I can't believe how much better my life is. And, and, and I have to be very careful in my office, but I try to find graceful ways to say, I don't think you're doing so well. You can't make a grocery list. You can't remember what time class is at our office, you know? So I think that, um, and, and this has complicated everything else. Back to where I started. What do we used to see a lot of diabetes, cancer, heart disease? Many of these drugs exacerbate those conditions. We see people coming in the office who they say they're there because they're diabetic, and they are. And they're taking 2,000 milligrams of metformin a day. 
They're also on a psychiatric drug that causes weight gain and blood glucose dysregulation. Well, you can't get rid of the diabetes until you change that, which means you have to get off the drug. And getting off these drugs is harder than getting off of heroin and cocaine and other addictive, known addictive substances. So some of these people have a much longer pathway to recovery than they ever imagined. Um, I've been in quite a few films about diet and health, and so they watch these films, diabetic changes his or her diet and is off their drugs and, and uh, you know, in remission or a former diabetic within a matter of a few weeks, they think that's going to happen for them. And then we have to show them the evidence that that isn't going to happen for them until they spend the time withdrawing from this drug, which can take weeks, months, or even years. It's a, it's a horrifying situation. And I think it's one that is going to cost our society for, for generations to come. The, the price tag is, is not only economic, but we're talking about 25% of people in the United States, we think, are taking these drugs. And this represents a level or a percentage of the population that's operating under impairment. Think about the consequences of that for the military, for the government. How would you like to have somebody who's governor of your state who can't make a grocery list or a meal plan? This should frighten everybody. And again, I think if more consumers knew this, I, I think that we could just really change this so quickly with a big consumer movement.